Welcome to Nugget 261 with Stephen Dana Groman, and today we will be talking about the VLAs in Owens Valley. In Nugget 260, we went over an article called Long Distance Call. We started talking about VLAs, and I had promised to take you to Owens Valley and show you the VLA system that's out there near Big Pine. It's just south of Bishop, and it's off of US 395, my favorite highway in the United States. I want to start with this scripture. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Commanded, Isaiah 45 12. Now as I was researching these VLAs and we've been to several of them it is quite captivating. The information is just really cool but you've got to realize what is the point? Why are they doing it? And that is the most important part. If you boil it down it's simply a waste of time and money and energy of some very brilliant minds. But we do see these things and I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. We drove up on this rather beat up road out in the desert in the east side of California and it said National Radio Astronomy Observatory. Very long base array. And that is what the VLBA stands for. Very long baseline array. Operated by Associated Universities, Inc. under cooperative agreement with National Science Foundation. And we continued on the road until we reached this fence. Posted. No trespassing. Keep out. Notice. Unauthorized enter is forbidden. Notice. This facility is remotely monitored. Stop. Stand back. One of the other signs says Caltech Owens Valley Radio Observatory. And it's also called OVRO. There's all kinds of initials and acronyms that these people use. Authorized personnel only. The large dish-shaped structure you see is part of the Very Long Baseline Array Radio Telescope. It is one of 10 antennas spread across the United States to allow astronomers to make detailed studies of celestial objects. Each 260-ton, 25-meter, which is 82 feet, diameter antenna is part of a radio frequency telescope that is controlled remotely from the Science Operations Center in Socorro, New Mexico. Locally, the systems are maintained and monitored by site technicians. The 10 antennas simultaneously collect extremely faint radio emission from objects in space. The received radio waves and reference signals from an ultra-precise clock are recorded onto hard disk modules. These disk modules are then shipped to the Science Operations Center where a high-performance computer cluster synchronizes and combines the signals, creating the data products that astronomers use to make images and perform precise measurements. Together, the 10 antennas can measure image detail at a resolution better than a thousandth of a second of arc. This is equivalent to being able to watch a football game on the surface of the moon. All right, a few things I do want to point out. That it is data that's being collected and they create images. This is key when you're learning or reading about anything about NASA or space. They collect data and they create images. When they mention the Socorro site, the, we have been to the VLA site out there and the operations are in Socorro, the actual antennas are actually located between Daytil and Magdalena, New Mexico, far west of Socorro. Continuing on with the sign, astronomers from around the world use the VLBA as a unique research tool to investigate the most detailed inner workings of galaxies and quasars billions of light years distant, or to probe deeply into regions where new stars are being formed. That's all just something that they are saying that there is no proof, there is no true science for anything in that statement. Geophysicists, on the other hand, use the celestial observations to monitor each antenna's location on the Earth with a precision better than one centimeter in order to study continental drift, deformations of the Earth's surface due to tides, and tiny variations in the Earth's rotation. In special cases, the VLBA joins other facilities to create a larger, more capable telescope. The antenna is very sensitive to radio frequency interference. Please turn off cell phones. Okay. If this thing is able to reach deep into space billions of light years away, and I have to turn off my cell phone when I'm on the other side of the fence because I'm going to affect this, does this make any sense? Not to me. And here are other locations. St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, Hancock, New Hampshire, North Liberty, Iowa, Fort Davis, Texas, Los Alamos, New Mexico, Pie Town, New Mexico, Kitt Peak, Arizona, Owens Valley, California, Brewster, Washington, and Mauna Kea, Hawaii. This is the website for Owens Valley Radio Observatory. The Owens Valley Radio Observatory 
is one of the largest university-operated radio observatories in the world. It is dedicated to research in radio astronomy and astrophysics, the training of the next generation of radio astronomers, the development of cutting-edge radio instrumentation. It is operated by the Astronomy Department of the California Institute of Technology, known by locals as the Big Ears. The observatory is located near Bishop, California, approximately 250 miles north of Los Angeles on the east side of the Sierra Nevada. It was established in 1956 at an altitude of 4,009 feet. On this site, it mentions that the OVRO has used its telescopes and other instruments to improve on the locations of radio sources in the sky, to study hydrogen clouds within the Milky Way, galaxy formation, active galactic nuclei, fast radio bursts, and other radio astronomical phenomena. This research is performed by the staff at the observatory with help from professors and postdoctoral students from many institutions. And their site goes on and talks about what all is actually physically out there at the Owens Valley location. And here are some pictures that we found of when they were establishing this antenna array out in 1956. That must have been a sight to see. One of uh, Caltech's first radio telescopes, a 32-foot antenna constructed on Palomar Mountain in 1956, was moved to the Owens Valley and re-erected with a solid fiberglass surface. All that remains of it now are some fragments at OVRO and pieces of concrete in the ground at Palomar across the road from the museum. And we had planned to go to the Palomar Observatory. That was back when COVID hit and it just ruined all those plans. We actually do enjoy going to these places. As I read through the site and all this, it all, as I said, sounds really fascinating and interesting. But the point is they've been working on this for decades and I'm not really sure what they've come up with that would meet the scientific method. What's my point? My point is, what's their point? Because the Bible tells us in Isaiah 45, 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. He created the heavens and the earth. As we read in Nugget 260, Eve is the mother of all. This earth is all there is. And to be searching for life and waiting to pick up some radio signal from E.T. is just futile. Share our content with your friends and family and help us grow our channel. In the next Nugget, we will be taking you to do some you pick fruit picking. Yeah, something different. Thank you.